Ready. Play. This championship point here for Coco Golf to win the WTA finals. On the heels of uh, a Beijing 1000 title as well and a Wuhan 1000 semi. Yeah. So it's been a good post US Open since. Very uh, good. Oh, I think, I mean, maybe a little bit less so today. I would love to ask Coco, is, are you playing? Oh, better my goodness. Now? And what a way to win the title with the serve out wide and then the uh, forehand in the corner, but with a little bit of a continental grip as well with the slice. And yeah, Chung was nowhere near it. So, wow, she falls to the ground. And it's huge and i i've okay. been so, so impressed with coco this last week actually more as i say than yeah. i mean the neck cord there i'm just seeing her react oh yeah i'm just seeing the point by the way it's a yes. lovely lovely winner very yeah. she's very creative at times i think coco. she is yes i think her her iq like her improvisational skills are pretty yeah. good like midpoint as well and I do feel like towards the end she was just more solid mentally you know she just didn't make as many unforced errors she was just very very strategic about how she was playing this point, especially those higher loopier shots with no pace, just really getting Zhang out of her comfort zone. You know, Zhang, Absolutely. at times her feet froze in that tie break. I think she'll definitely want that tie break back. I was impressed with Zhang as well, you know, to get it to the tie break and save those yeah. championship points that she did. So it was a very good match in the end, very fun to watch, like just two players that just gave it their absolute all. But Coco um, was just a little bit stronger, you know? Yeah. So, so to run us through it, I said as we went into the tiebreak, or certainly as we went into the five-six games, five-six game where she was serving to stay in the uh, in the match, um, Zheng, that it almost felt like Zheng had lost the match twice. Why? Because she was up a set and a break, and seemingly on her way to winning the title, she recovered from the mental, you know, shock that would have been struggling with. I'm sure going into the third set, having seen that advantage go and Coco reel her in, but. She goes up a break again and she's serving for the match. And that's really what will be the headlines, really, in terms of you know how the match went from 15 love, serving for the match, I think at 5-4, to ultimately uh seeing Coco go on to live the title. Have they got Coco Goff title winning t-shirts? I'm not sure uh if her team have. I'm not sure I'd be too happy if I was Coco. I, I'm sure that they're just Coco Goff t-shirts, but I wasn't sure if it was like World Tour Finals winner. But yeah, I mean Zheng, just to uh, come back to her um Vanch, uh it was a it was tough to watch in the end because I do think that despite Coco's heroics there at times, sometimes Coco was just waiting for the error to come. Yeah, I do think particularly in that 5-4 game where she served for it the first time and she won the first point, went up 15 love. I think she was handed a few gifts there in that game for sure and didn't have to do a ton to get, make her way back into it, like to break her fireball. That was just Jung feeling really, really nervous serving out the big title biggest of her career. Yeah. And uh, yeah, then after that, I think Coco also, like then Jung had a break point as well in that game and she made three unforcers in a row there as well. Then I have to give Sean a ton of credit for getting into the tie break. And then, of course, you have to start with the tie break, which is very crucial because Coco wins that first point. And then she makes a few returns back into play. But ultimately, like, yeah, it was just like her competitiveness or grittiness. This was this was by far not her best match of the week. I mean, you know, like the spell that she had in this match from three all to like three six one three was just you know, a lot of backhand errors for her, like way more than we're used to seeing. It was not a clean performance by any stretch. But towards the end of both sets, I mean, she was just the more reliable player, the more sturdier one. She was more patient in terms of how she constructed the points. Very clever as well, how she went about it and just like trusted her own uh, fitness and this like, you know, very, very strategic. So I, I think at the end, like she was a worthy winner, but and, and it also helps also that this, this title run will be boosted by the fact that she did beat the world number one and two along the way. So. Coco had the same question as Brazy, by the way. That's what she was. I think she spoke to the umpire at Six Love. And, oh, wow. Uh, that's what, I'm surprised. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. I, I thought this was maybe just, yeah, only a slam thing, you know, that you played in the final set type break. So I, yeah. I posited this notion, basically, just as that match point was playing out, that I don't know. I've 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 had the feeling this week that she's playing better even than she was in that North American swing, largely because I'm mm -hmm. seeing her beat players of this caliber back to back, you know, like yeah. Iga and, and Arena, but then also today against Kin Wen in, in different fashions. I know she was phenomenal during that stretch, 
But, you know, she would have beaten Eager in Cincinnati and she would have beaten Arena in New York. And, of course, Mukova in the semi-final as well. But I don't know. It just feels like... Uh, I'm going into these matches now with Coco, not seeing her as the underdog, if that makes sense. I'm seeing it as being a 50-50 or I'm seeing her as the favourite. Whereas, because, partly because, maybe because of the way she plays the game, I sort of feel as though she's sort of fighting to stay with these players. But um, mm. not not now. Not now. She's here. And, and, and yeah. I don't know if that rings true or you, you maybe you disagree, but, but whatever your thoughts are on that, Fanch. No, I think I think I do go into these matches feeling like very you do feel like pretty reass, pretty pretty assured that like she's gonna at least make it really competitive or beat them, like against anyone in the world, where it's like I don't know if I felt like that fifteen months ago at the US Open, you know. Right. I kind of was still going there was still the question mark like, okay, is she gonna be able to do it in a in a major in that really big setting? Um you know, with all the eyes on her, and she was she was she gonna like kind of keep it going? I think the fact that she did go through those ups and downs this year with the double faults and the the various the various issues like that spell between I guess post Roland Garros till the end of the U.S. Open was like not good for her really, and I think just the the just the work that she probably did to like get back in shape like the next four or five weeks and then hiring the new coach with Matt Daly like just figuring out a few few things in her in her game when it comes to her forehand and her serve like yeah it has it has reaped the rewards and we, we see it now over the last three weeks i mean she lost just that one match to sabalenka and wuhan where she was up six one four two and kind of yeah. like, was gonna win no doubt like if she even if she only hit like 15 double falls instead of 21 she likely would have won yeah so i just think uh i just think yeah like it's, this could be big like going into next year you know maybe she went yeah. to the other next year it's possible yeah because like i know like and now for instance there was a time where, like, I didn't really want to watch Coco Golf and Igor Shvantec matches anymore because you kind of just knew yeah. what was going to happen. But now I come into this Australian Open, like, okay, Coco Golf versus Igor Shvantec. Like, I want to see it now, you know? Yeah. No, definitely. Uh, just a word on Kin Wen as well. I obviously should be feeling pretty or very disappointed right now. But... You know, it's been a it's been a, a a huge step forward for her this year, making the final today, winning the Olympics, of course, and also her first Grand Slam final back in Australia. I I actually probably am a bit bigger on her than 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 maybe even you and Damien. I was just listening to you earlier when you were sort of talking about her potential. I think in response to a question at the beginning of the show, comparing her potentially to Yannick Sinner uh, in terms of her maybe having a breakout year or, or another step forward like Yannick has had this year on the men's side. I don't quite see those levels from her, but. I do see a slam sometime soon. I, I see another final, for example, and maybe if she can avoid playing Sabalenka, you know, yeah. she can beat Igor on play, for example. Not many people can can say that. Yeah, I think I think I'm excited about the clay swing for her because that's the one where like if she plays Iga at Roland Garros, like I would be very interested in that match, you know? Because I do feel like she can Beat a lot of players on clay, like maybe, maybe it actually will be Roland Garros if she wins this time. Maybe I mean, like it's not totally out of the question. Uh, but I just, yeah, the seven income match. I still need to see a little bit more from her, you know, in that head to head. Like Owen Five is a little bit like, besides the Wuhan where she was really boosted by the crowd and Sabalenka not really playing her best. I got to see a little bit more before I say she can win a slam. But it's possible if Sabalenka loses early, if you know if she catches Iga on a little bit of an off day, like I could see it happening, but. I definitely see like maybe another top five finish, maybe a kind of similar season to what she had today. I'm not quite sold on the whole Yannick Sinner thing because like Sinner showed us so much at the end of last year, like when he was beating Djokovic and Medvedev. Yeah. And, and then, you know, you, you kind of like, you had a feeling that, okay, like he, he was the best player in the world. Whereas right now there's still like, she's just one of the best players in the world. Yeah, but she's exactly. in that peak. Yeah, she is. Uh, by the way, I think this uh, tweet from Renee is probably going into the tie break or, or maybe midway through it because she was obviously getting the same feeling that we had. Mm -hmm. I, I do think that, that we're lauding Coco and rightly so, but yeah, um, Kinwen, it's going to be a tough loss for her because of, of the advantage she she had on, on yeah. two, a huge advantage. I mean, you're three points away from victory on your serve. And then, yeah, I'll have to go back and check, but I'm sure she hit double figures for unforced errors in a very short space of time, probably double figures for across about 20 points, you know? So it just felt like every point was ending with her either dumping it in the net or going long or going wide. There was one point where she was maybe a bit unfortunate because it clipped the net and then went wide. But yeah, anyway, um, big thanks, uh, Vanch, for your expertise today. 
Yep, thank you. It was a lot of fun. I mean, second longest final of the year as well. And the, oh, really? Uh, was it? Yeah, after the Madrid final. This is the second oh, longest. Okay. This year, yeah. it's a good way to finish it off with, um, yeah, two worthy finalists and pretty good storyline coming into 2024, 2025, excuse me, for both of them. Okay. I like that, 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 that it's, it's up there in that respect. I like the fact that we did have such a nail biter for the end of the, the WTA sort of main tour season, if you like. I think there might be some one, two fives happening in the coming weeks in, in Latin America. And of course, we've got the Billy Jean King Cup. Uh, also a reminder, of course, to stay tuned, hit the like button and subscribe and all that jazz. Make sure you check out Vanch on Twitter at Vanch 2K. Yeah, Vanch P2K. Okay. What does that mean, by the way? The P2K. Oh, okay. V is just my last name, Vermont, yeah. and then um, 2K is 2000, the year that I was born. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, do that, and obviously follow us on Twitter and Instagram too, at Talking Tennis TT. And, yes, yeah, stay tuned, because in about a little under half an hour, we'll have uh, Damien and Mario bringing us ATP Weekly. Tomorrow as well, we'll have a watch-along for the Medvedev-Fritz match. We may even do a watch-along for the second ATP Finals match. And sandwiched in between, we will have WTA Weekly tomorrow with Nick and Rene Stubbs. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and you know the drill. If you enjoyed this video, Make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.